Yo, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Um, quick video today. Like I told you before, I want to keep these short. I know the first one went a little bit long, but that was just the introductory to all these other videos that I'm going to be doing. Today, I want to talk about something that everybody has probably heard about before in their lives. Most people throw this word around and not many people actually know what they're talking about. I mean, sometimes I don't even know what I'm talking about when it comes to it. But I've read a couple of books on it and I've seen a couple of videos and things. So I, I kind of get the gist of it. So that word is manifestation, right? You've always heard about it. You can manifest the life you want. Even the, the image that I have up right here. Visualize the life you want to have. So... It's been thrown around and it's very surface level at this point. You know, anything that really goes commercial kind of gets wasted through keychains and books and things like that that people try to make money off of. Even though it's a very, very important thing that any human can figure out. So how I got introduced to manifestation visualization so seeing something in your mind believing you have it and then having faith that it will manifest itself so when i was a kid um, i grew up in a christian home and my i have three brothers and what my mom really wanted this like really nice car was a chrysler grand voyager it's one of those big black um bus a little van minivans right and she had it up on the mirror and every day before school she would bring us into that room and we would all look at this picture and she would tell us like imagine yourself going to school in this car and we would do that every day now the p important thing about manifestation is being able to let it go right and not oprah says it w good as well she says you once you want something, you've got to meet it on its vibration, on its frequency. Essentially saying that you can't want something so bad that you fear you might not get it, right? Because that fear creates lack. Lack creates the fact that, oh wait, I don't actually have it. And that's why Neville Goddard comes up, which I'll get to in a bit. But... So that's what we did. So now the important thing about knowing to let go is that we as kids, we didn't, we did that. We looked at it, we visualized it, everything. But then we were, it was easier for us to let it go because we weren't so invested into it. So we would go about our day. Now, I don't know if maybe my mom was like holding on to it more because, you know, it's something she really wanted. But through us boom we got the car we got that exact car and that's we literally used to go to and fro from school and we even had a carpool so that was like the first time i saw wow this is this is actually incredible that you can do this even doing that you kind of you see it and you see this power and then you you let it go because you know life takes a hold and people tell you you can't do this and you you know and then you kind of conform to all those things but eventually years later i used it to manifest my sp my specific person different video that i'll do because that's very in depth of how i used it that exact method to get my first girlfriend ever which was pretty insane but then i did fall off the path and so years later my uncle comes to me and he's like oh here's this book um i want you to read it and i was like oh what's this and it was the secret you know everybody knows the secret i was i used to see it on oprah all the time people saying this that and the other a lot of people against it a lot of people for it and so i read the book and i was it was pretty incredible and i was like wow is this real and then it took me back to wait, but I've already been a part of a situation like this with the car and my mom. But anyways, long story short, I, I binged the book and then I binged the DVD as well. And I just, I couldn't 
get enough of it like but as with most things you can read as much as you want on something but unless you actually put it into action nothing's really going to happen you, you know it's like there's there's a saying where they basically say like if like if having all the knowledge in the world made you the richest person then librarians would be billionaires or something like that but anyways so then i obviously fell off the path after the secret because life got me down in the dumps and you know you just you think you don't think much of it anymore after that years later come to this point we've got i hear this name keep popping up my friend even keeps telling me oh, neville this neville that i was like who's this guy i was super into inner engineering by Sadhguru at the time so when my friend said go check out neville goddard i i i put it i just put it at the back you know and i was like i'll get to that but then shortly after that i had videos pop up you know how the algorithm works you speak to your friends all of a sudden you get recommended everything and it was all these people talking about neville 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 and first i thought it was like you get this these other people they're also in the same i guess community and they talk about like abraham hicks so i was i thought that neville goddard was another one of those people like uh, children of abraham i don't know what they call themselves i've also seen a couple of their things and i think they also a part of the secret as well but anyways so i finally look into neville's things and boom i was like this guy's a prophet like this guy you see a lot of the time in these books they tell you certain things just like oprah said she said oh you've got to meet the vibration you know and like by saying that it doesn't really it doesn't really give you clarity and how neville says it is the best way i've ever heard it which is living in the wish fulfilled so remember oprah said that if you meet the thing you got to meet it at its vibration you can't want it so badly that you fear you're not going to get it and then neville says you've got to live in the wish fulfilled like you already have it and it will come to you and so that's the interesting part because if you already get something you're not going to be sitting there fearing that you're not going to get it you're going to be grateful that you have it so that is the law of assumption you've already assumed that you have it and that relaxes you and you're able to go about your day knowing that it's going to come to you it's the same like this if you order something online from Amazon and you know it's coming to you you put you set the date it's coming in 3 days now you're not sitting there worried like oh is it going to come to me or not you know it's you know it's coming in 3 days maybe there might be a delay but that's on amazon side you going to get it so that's exactly the same way you have to look at your manifestations it's just knowing it's on its way and living like you already have it no fear the wish fulfilled the law of assumption which all tied back into my the reason you're here which is the tennis ball experiment so my friend and i we go run every day at that point in time so this day he brings his dog and i meet him in the field cuz we got a lot of fields and stuff out here where we run through he has his dog and he's got a tennis ball okay so we throwing the tennis ball so we decide okay we're going to walk the dog dog named storm we're going to walk the dog drop him back at home and then go for the run i'm like okay cool it doesn't really matter so we throwing the tennis ball he runs down throw the tennis ball he runs down brings it back every time brings it back obviously i got a bit of that shoulder on me i got a bit of that shoulder i throw so i don't know why i just felt like i wanted to throw this as hard and as fast as i could I threw this super far and then he comes back and he doesn't have the tennis ball. And we're like, "Oh, because the tennis ball is like it's dirty. So it's not luminous green anymore. It's like it's brown. It actually and the field is dry. So it's brown and dark and it, the tennis ball camouflages so well in that dry grass at this point because it's summer that it's like, "Oh, this is going to be hard to find." 
So we walk down this whole field, looking, looking, looking. We don't see anything. And I just tell my friend, yeah, let's leave it for now. And let's just walk and come back. Maybe we'll find it on the way back up. So as we're going, we still see nothing. And I get this idea in my head. I'm like, yo, let's do this. Okay, this is a little exercise we can do. Basically, what we'll do is we will imagine. And I told him, just close your eyes and picture in your mind that you're walking along and you see the tennis ball in the grass. There's even a shadow on it because the sun is from this side. And engage in all your, your five senses. So feel the wind, the smells of the field, the heat, everything. What you're seeing, what you're hearing. Because that's what Neville says. Like, put yourself in there in the 3D space by engaging in your senses. Because that's the, your five senses are the only thing that really keeps you on this three-dimensional plane. That really gives reality to anything on this plane so i do it and he does it right and it's just a little bit of an exercise somewhere in me i feel like nothing is going to happen but i kid you not a minute two minutes later as we're walking boom i see a tennis ball and i'm like what crazy also let me add that you, you have to feel the feeling of how you felt how you would feel if you saw the ball like excitement like wow and like truly feel it and i find i see a tennis ball and i grab it i'm like whoa look at this and it's not the tennis ball that we lost it was like torn and ripped but still together 30 seconds later my friend finds another tennis ball he's like whoa dude look at this this is the craziest yeah. part we found about five or six different tennis balls all along that exact path that we were walking and not one of them was the one that we lost so that was pretty interesting that made me think that there was someone who said and i can't remember who said it but they basically said that if you don't get exactly what you imagined then you need to imagine things better or something like that so i feel like we saw tennis balls in our heads but we didn't see the exact one that was lost and we walked home with all these tennis balls and when we dropped the dog we just threw all the balls back into the yard and still to this day i mean i get goosebumps thinking about that story because how it's such a simple technique and it's one i came up with which was pretty interesting because normally people tell you about try this, that, and the other, but that's as simple as it is. That's, and that's the way forward to manifest, especially if you look at things like with Neville Goddard. And this is, this is the formula. You've got to see it in your head, imagine it, and then put yourself there in the 3D space. Engage your five senses and then feel the emotion of how you would, have, how you would feel when you actually already have it. What would be what would definitely tell you in that moment that oh i've already got this and then just remain in that wish fulfilled and when you're in the wish fulfilled you're not going to be thinking that you want 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 you already have it you'll just be grateful for it and that's about it so that's going to be the video this video on manifestation got way more but that was that was a brilliant one um i'm going to do the video about my specific person that was also a gem and yeah thanks for watching like share subscribe if you resonate with this and peace